Right, hello everybody and welcome again to another live session. Now, today I'm going to be working on, as you can see, a pair of swans. Now, I started working on this this morning, got the background on, and I wanted this to dry so I can go live with you this evening. Um, at least now, with the background on and the basic wash on the two swans, I can make a start on uh, kind of picking out some of the details and some of the washes, uh, thinking about um, kind of variegated washes in places for the beak and so on. So I'm going to go through some of this just over the next 25 minutes or so, 20, 25 minutes, something like that will be on, on tonight. So I can go straight to Facebook for 7 o'clock-ish, around that kind of time as well. After that, I'll be going obviously to Instagram, so I'm all over the place. So uh, stay with me for the next 20 minutes or so and we'll, um, I'll show you what I'm going to work on. So I'll see you in a minute after this quick message. Don't hang about, I'll be there in a minute. Hang on, one sec. Let me tell you a little bit about patreon.com forward slash the Devon Artist. There's currently over 80 hours of video tuition for you. There's also tips and tricks videos, full length art videos, a PDF document which will go with that video, the outline drawing, the reference photograph, but most of all, let me show you all my techniques from my 40 years of painting wildlife. For the $10 level, you get access to all of that catalogue of video tutorials coming back for well over one and a half years. Also bear in mind that I produce a brand new video tutorial every month. You can cancel your donation whenever you want, you can downgrade it, you can upgrade it to a different tier. Now I've also got a companion page which will help you navigate Patreon and locate the information and tutorials that you want to find. I've also got a Facebook group which you gain access to when you become a member. So all you need to do is visit www.patreon.com forward slash the Devon Artist. I'll see you there. Well, thank you very much indeed for watching that. I mean, now we can finally get some painting done. There we go. Yeah, why not? Now, as I mentioned, I'm working on these swans. Just I just started it this morning, and I thought, well, once the background's on, I can start picking out some of the details, the pencil marks, really, where I've got to go. So I'm going to very lightly just touch around where the eye goes. Now I tend to do this with just a little bit of paint to begin with because when I put more washes over the top all the reference marks I put in pencil underneath will just disappear and when they disappear I can't see where they've gone so I like to just go over the top of the pencil marks a little bit with uh, just some weak wash of colour, it can be whatever colour you want within reason as long as it's within the same kind of colouration of, uh, of the wildlife you're painting, in this case the Paris ones. So, I'm very light these on the tip of the brush and just around the edge there. Now this eye is very dark on the photograph as well as you can see there. So quite dark. And just a little bit, trying to see where that goes. I can barely see much at all within there because the eye is very dark in there, so all this area here is quite dark. But I can just make out a little bit of a light just around there. So again, I'm just marking these out, mapping out the area, just so I can work out where things go when I start adding all that lovely detail later on. So that's the general idea behind this. So if you've got any questions you want to ask, now's your chance. Okay, well, you've got me live here on the internet, live here on, on YouTube. As I mentioned, I will be on Facebook after this as well. So if you are on Facebook and you're not on my channel on there, on my page, just type in as a search, The Devon Artist. You can see it in the top corner there, look. And you find me on there. In fact, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll um, see what I can find as in the width. Let's have a quick look. So you're looking at that there, okay? So there you go. That'll give us some ideas. You know YouTube. There's Instagram. I'll be going on there after Facebook. And Facebook, as you can see, is facebook.com forward slash the Devon Artist. So there you go. I'll give you some ideas on where you got to go. Uh, after I'll put it back on again for a member later on. If I forget, before I go, just say, Paul, don't forget. Okay. So that's that one there. Uh, let's have a look. So, and we're going to work on this, as I said, as we go along and really start picking out what we've got to work on that. I'm going to show you the full photograph as well in a minute so you know what I'm working on. So that's that one. Bear with me a minute. I've got to get the right one. That one there. There we go. Right. Now, the main photo to give us some ideas I'm working on is that one there. Okay, so that's what I'm looking for for the, the overall painting when it's all finished. Just to give us some general idea. Right, okay. Right, back to it, Paul. That's what we can do. So, hello, Darren Coombs. Evening to you, too. 
So I'll click back onto uh, YouTube and see what people have got to say. So as I say, if you've got any questions you want to ask me, now's your chance. And if you're watching this on Catch Up as well when it's not live, still post a question, I don't mind, and I will be around to kind of check it when I'm back on the internet, when I'm back on the computer, if I'm not painting. So not a problem at all. So please, um, you know, put a comment on there. So if you want to know what paints I use, what brushes I use, what paper do I use? What kind of paper do I use? So there's all these sort of questions that people like to ask on a regular basis when I'm working on this. Or any painting which I do. Uh, so I'm look around there. So as I say, I'm just kind of mapping out the area. Because looking at the beak around here as well, it does come down probably around there. I will zoom in a little bit for you shortly, by the way. So I'm just going to very lightly, two airs in air, just work out where some of these lines go. I don't want to lose my way when I'm painting because it's so easy to do so. When you start getting really into that detail work, you know, and you, <laughs> and you get so involved in what you're doing, sometimes it's very easy to lose your way. So all these little reference marks around here, all these pencil marks, I'm going to mark those out with a slightly different color later on. There's not much paint left in this brush. I can do it now. Just so that when I start working all this lovely detail around the head and the neck, then um, I know where I am because uh, otherwise you end up painting the lines in the wrong direction, you know, which isn't a clever idea. I've done that many times and then I realize why I have lost a shape on that particular uh, fur or feathers or whatever it might be I'm painting at the time. So very lightly as I'm coming down here and I'm looking, there's a lot of reflections in here as well. So I think that will probably about do. So it's working out, it's kind of planning things beforehand. When I start a painting, I look at what I've got to do. Okay, I look at the photograph, I'll sit and I'll study it. Now this particular photo, which I mentioned earlier on, is by a cracking photographer called Ben. So Ben Smith, hello Ben. So if you're going to be watching this or on Facebook shortly or on even Instagram after that, then hello Ben, thank you very much for the use of your photos. And um, you find Ben on Instagram, so it's Ben underscore Smith underscore photography. So Ben Smith photography. And also on Facebook, Ben is on there for Back Garden Bird Studio. So you find him on there as well, okay? To give us some general idea who he is. So you can have a look, say, oh, that's that blue cool. Let Paul have the photo of him. Oh, I see. Right, okay. Now, with all watercolors, we like to start off with the lightest colors first. Now, I'm looking at probably around the orange areas, probably to begin with. I'm not going to do... All the feathers just yet. I'm going to do them probably last of all. I'm going to work around the head first. So again, I'm going to work around this area first. I'm going to put the lightest color, which is going to be the orange. However, when you look at that photograph, you can see towards the very tip of the photo itself. Let's see if we can point that out for you. So right at the very tip under there, right underneath the photo, just there, like that about there. As you can see, it's more of a kind of like a ready like a, a lizard and crimson weakened down sort of color so what i've basically done there i've done some testing first i always do my testing out as you can see here a lot before i even start a painting okay got some ideas what colors you're going to use that way so if i just zoom in i'll show you what i mean okay is that a bit better for you there you go hello again so you can see now within the photograph if i just put that towards the side there that is similar it's just too orange at the moment there we need a little bit more color in there now it's alizarin crimson, cadmium orange and scarlet lake. So I'd add a little bit more scarlet lake into this side here, just so it fades through to the tip of the beak color. So it's too orange at the moment, just a little bit more red needed. So do some testing before you make a start on the painting. Okay. Now the coloring question, as I mentioned, is going to be, as I did say, alizarin crimson. Now I've already got some in my palette, just needs weakening down a little bit before I go any further with this, because it's far, far too thick. So I'm going to get my pipette. And drop some water in there. A couple of drops should probably be, oh, drop one on the bit of paper, should probably about do it, which it does. Turn that around so it doesn't soak through. And then you need to test this really on some scrap paper first. So scrap watercolor paper, preferably the paper that you're using as well, the same type of paper, which is what I've got here. Okay, uh, I'm gonna go, let's go for a little bit of Scarlet Lake in there as well. It's gonna be too much to begin with, I think. So again, you can offer that towards the side of the photograph, as you can see here. And you can see it's getting closer. Might want a bit more orange in there. There you go. And let's say that's cadmium orange, 
just look at that one there. So that's how I tend to kind of work it out. The other way, obviously you can work things out, is by using little holes cut in pieces of card, which I also do on the odd occasion, if I really can't work that colour out. What I'll do, I get pieces of card like this lot. There you go, looks a bit odd, I know. But if you offer one over the photograph, i.e. the tablet in front of you, or the iPad, or the computer screen, or even just a printout, then, and you can offer one over the area on the painting, then you can work out that way. It's much easier to kind of isolate the colours that you're trying to mix, trying to work out those individual colours. And I've used those just a few times there, just some scrap pieces of card, or you can do it on watercolour paper, so you can just test it on the back as well. So just an idea for you. Now then, orange, are you ready for this? And a little bit of Scarlet Lake. I'll water that down a little bit more on that. Okay, let's have a quick look. Um, Darren, I'll uh, have a quick look before I put this colour on. I took advantage of the Jackson art sales and bought myself several Cotman double zero brushes. I've been taking them on holiday with me. Well done, Darren. As I said, I did exactly the same thing. So brilliant offer, brilliant offer. It's really, really good information going on there. <laughs> so thank you very much indeed. Now, that's uh, started to say I bought quite a few, as I shown you last week, that arrived. Um, they're a little bit cheaper, they're about, I think they're about 50 pence cheaper, something like that. I can't quite remember how much cheaper they were now. But they were a little bit cheaper than the, the ones I normally buy from my normal supplier. Now I'm going to see where this goes down to. It goes down to about here. Just about there, look. There you go. Uh, I want to wet this probably a couple of times, two or three times. Just so it stays kind of wetter longer. So I've got a fan blowing here, I'll just turn the fan off. Because you will pick that up on the microphone. It always does when I'm recording video for, for Patreon as well. So, um, so <laughs> it gets a bit warm sometimes in the summertime. Okay, so I'm going to soften that down, work it into the paper. I'm not pushing it in, I don't want to ruin the, the nap of the paper. I just want to just let it soak in. Give it a little bit of a helping hand as well. Now, the thing is with all watercolour washes that you start off, as we said, with the lightest colour first and then gradually build your way up darker as you go on. So, and that way, when you do that, you find you've got a little bit more kind of wiggle room if there's one or two little mistakes, okay? So, just wet it again. And then we're going to go in with the Cadmium Orange and the Scarlet Lake mix first of all. Now, as I mentioned, this might not be red enough. We'll see. It needs to be more orange than red. I'll put it that way. And I'm not too worried if it goes in the black area where the, uh, the main front of the swan will go. Just to there. And that comes down probably to about there. I'm going to give the brush a quick rinse out and then come back in with a very watery, very watery alizarin crimson. Now this is where this goes. Remember, this is just that initial foundation wash. That's all we're after at the moment. Nothing flash, nothing more than that. Just something to start us off with and something that we can build up on top of. Now I say it's fairly warm in here today, so it probably will dry reasonably quickly. Get a brush a wash out and I may just add a little bit more of the orangey color just into the very tip of this area here. There we go. And you can strengthen it slightly more, not as much as that. You can soak it back up that. Just a little bit more, a bit stronger. Just while it's nice and wet. If this starts to dry, and you want to put another, another colour over the top, and it's starting to dry, and if you can't see a shine on the paper, then at that point you just want to say, okay, let's just leave it to dry. I'll give it a quick blast from a distance. We know a song about that, don't we? With a hairdryer, all right? So, because you find um, if you do it quite close up, it could, one, it could burn the paper. Well, a little bit it could do. It could get too hot for the paper. And also, it could dry it probably um, unevenly as well. So it's nice to kind of let it dry naturally if you can, because then you've got the nice kind of blend going on. It could work for itself without you doing anything more. You know, so you can just let it blend and let it do, you know, let what it needs to do. And that way, you know, you can come back to it and carry on working with it. Right, I think what I might do with that, you know, I might get a little bit more of that Scarlet Lake and just pop it back into here. Just a tiny bit in the corner there, look. 
and then just get a bit more of the orange, mix that in there, just in one corner. And while it's wet again, remember you can just add that little bit more. I don't want it too red. That's what I'm trying to avoid. Yeah, about there. That'll do. Then a little bit down the side. Because this does curve over as it comes around. You can see that on the photograph to my left there. So it does come down to about there. And there. Okay. We'll leave that to dry, I think. And then we'll start building on the top of that as we go along. So as I say, it doesn't have to be perfect, just something to work on top of. That's what I'd like to see. Now then, I want to look around the eye and I'm going to switch my brush back to my small one again. Which is this one. Okay, and I'm going to look at what I've got to put in there. I'm going to start off with a weak wash, a weak wash of, it is a French Ultramarine. There's also, I'm trying to think what I put in there, Elysian Crimson. French Ultramarine, a lizard and crimson, and a tiny little bit of lemon yellow to give me a dark colour, okay? And if you want to, then you can add a little bit of lamp black in there as well. I know there's a few people, that, well, quite a lot of people that don't use black or white paint. I like to use both. So I do use lamp black, as my patrons know, my members on Patreon know. It's just one of those colours which I like to use. And um, I think it works really well. But normally I would add a colour to it as well. I wouldn't just use it on its own. So this one I'm going to make up to probably a bit of a watery, kind of milky consistency really. So if I just look at the side of that eye, I'm going to go for the inside area first. And just gently, very gently, take your time, there's no rush, you should never rush your painting. Just very gently start looking at the shape within the eye. Try and get the shape right first of all. Keep looking at that photograph, as you can see to my left. And the more you look, the more you see. I mean, my eyes are probably flicking back and forward at the photograph every four or five seconds. On average, I would say, as a guess. I'm not timing it, honestly. But, <laughs> but as a guess, that's roughly what I'm looking at, as a guess. Because um, it could be because I've got a very short-term memory. Or it could be because it helps it kind of sink into your mind a little bit more. Every time you look at that photograph, you see something new. Well, you know, it tends to kind of secure it in your mind a bit more. And I'm going to lightly fill this in. Remember, this is just that foundation washing the eye. And I think, looking at the highlight in there, there's a little bit, look how this is granulated a lot. A little bit of raw rumber. Some colours do granulate, so they do go bitty. It's the nature of the colour, nature of the pigment. Which is fine, you get that with French Ultramarine. In fact, when you look at this one here, look, <laughs> look how they've uh, separated in there as well. See, that's French Ultramarine and Burnt Umber, and they've completely separated there. Like, I have to remix that one, even though it was mixed originally. Amazing, isn't it, really? How they tend to just part company. Put a little bit within that highlight there. I'm going to wash the brush, give it a light dampen, and just kind of fill that in a little bit. And that will dry very quickly because I've gone straight onto the dry paper. Now if I went onto damp paper, if I wetted it first, light the beak, it would take a little bit longer to dry. So, uh, so that's on that one there, okay. Now then, I think what we need to do is look around the eye as well and start thinking about some of the areas around here which need to be lightened or darkened as well. Gradually building up as we go along. And probably around the side there as well, just to lighten it. So this is a white area. We'll be using watercolour white around this area. And trying to not use too much white on this because it can look very stark. It can flatten the painting completely. You can use um, white gouache. Well, gouache white is a nice one to use because it's obviously opaque as well. That's a nice one you can use instead of uh, watercolour white. Now I'm going to go for a little bit of French Ultramarine and that dark colour I've already made up, so French Ultramarine and that dark colour. But I need to water this down again. I do not want to go too thick too quick. So it's quite a lot of drops of water in there just to thin it down. 
And you find that if you test things as I'd always do, you can see how pale that is, look, how light that is, compared to the thicker version, which is like this, you know. So uh, it looks really black, doesn't it? Even though it's not all black. Okay. So as I say, if you've got any questions you want to ask me, just please do, just while you got me on here. Um, because um, now is your chance really to kind of ask away. And looking at the shapes around the top of the eye, down to about there. Okay. Now it doesn't feel like I've been on 25 minutes, but I've been on about 25 minutes. I'm going to have to go very shortly because I'm going to go onto Facebook shortly as well. So we made a start. We've got a wash on the beak. Now remember, if you want to follow, find me on Facebook, you know where I am now. Just go on Facebook, type in The Devon Artist, and you find me on there. Or, if I bring up the link again for you, which I will do, and you'll see the link, uh, let's have a good look, which is that one there, look. So Facebook is the one I put it, so you can see it. Just that one there, facebook.com forward slash The Devon Artist Paul. That's my full address of the Facebook webpage. So if you want to pop on there very shortly, <laughs> I'll be on there within the next five or ten minutes going live again. I know it's a very short process, this one, it really is. Um, and I'll be on there for probably half an hour, 35 minutes, something like that, as you can tell. I'm going to see what we've got there. Okay, get rid of that. Okay. So I'm going to say goodbye in a minute. So if you've got any questions, please ask now. If you want to ask me a question. And as I said, if you don't and you find this on Catch Up, then still ask anyway. So I'll still be able to reply. Just looking down the side and seeing where I've got to go. See this area there, there's all small little indentations around the side of the eye. Little tiny marks. The way it all kind of builds up gradually. And what we'll do on Facebook, we'll um, complete the eye itself and start working on the orange area of the beak and start building up the colour and the, the shape within there as well. Because I'm not going to add another wash on there until that is really, really dry. It's going to be bone dry before I go back in there with um, with another colour. Otherwise, you'll end up pulling that paint off, and you don't want to be doing that. And you'll also find that also depends on the type of paper you're using as well. Some some of the cheaper papers, this is um, Bockingford, by the way, and some of the cheaper papers you find, uh, this is a mid-range paper, uh, the cheaper ones will, very often, the paint will, the paper will start lifting off as well. So you've got to be very careful. All right. Okie dokie. Right, so I'm going to say goodbye now, and I'll catch you on Facebook in about five or ten minutes' time. I'm going to be on there as quick as I can. I did say about seven o'clock on there. And so uh, up until next time round, I'm going to say goodbye, and we'll talk to you again all very, very soon. So, bye for now. Hi, once again, welcome to my watercolour tutorials. Now, this time we're painting a very cute-looking meerkat. Um, this is one in question. But looking at this, we've got to think about all the different elements that's involved such as a wet in wet variegated background wash. We're going to be using masking fluid, so I'll show you how to do that. We'll be looking at the consistency of paint. Um, then we've got to think about the eye, trying to get a very detailed sparkling eye and a very wet looking nose and obviously the ear. Once we've got all those elements in place, then we start on the fur. But trying to create that shape underneath the fur, underneath all that detail first by using wet in wet washes.